Growing a business and scaling a business is about becoming an expert leader more than anything else. I just had somebody actually ask me the other day. He said, how do I expand and how do I grow my business? And I said, well, the first thing you have to remember is that the bigger you build a business, the greater your responsibility, but the less your responsibilities are going to be. And if you hang out all your responsibilities, you can't accept the larger responsibility. One of the things that gets in the way, and by the way, there are these lies that solopreneurs and smaller entrepreneurs believe. Number one lie, nobody can do what I do. And so you keep doing this basic responsibility. Wrong. It's just not true. It's not true about almost everything. You have to be able to free yourself from the thing that you're doing in your business so that you can work on your business. There are four components to become an expert. The first one is repetition. The next one is frequency. Now, ironically, these things are actually tied to how to be effective in communicating. We're going to get to that also in a little while, but repetition and frequency are not the same thing. If I said run two miles 100 times over a 20 year period of time, it would have no impact on your health. But if I said run two miles 100 times in 100 days, it would have an impact on your health. Why? Well, because it's the same number of repetitions, but the frequency is radically condensed. So that's why if a person wants to learn a foreign language and they take <clears throat> five or six years in school <clears throat> and they you know end up graduating from college, they were two, three years in high school, couple years in college and somebody says hey do you remember your spanish and they're like mm, dos cervezas, por favor. that's all they remember why well that's different than the missionary who took a couple of short classes or did duolingo for six months and now they're in a foreign country and i'm telling you uh, donde es el baño is a very real thing if you're in that country and everybody else is speaking spanish you better be able to know how to listen okay and so the intensity of the circumstance is there, but the frequency and the repetition is also there. You're doing it every day, all day long, as opposed to doing it in a class every once in a while and taking long breaks in between. Frequency and repetition. So you usually need to manufacture frequency and repetition to become an expert in something that you're doing. Now, why does this matter? Growing a business and scaling a business is about becoming an expert leader more than anything else. It's not about, and some people are like, no, no, you know what? I'm in, uh, I'm, I'm a photographer. I just had somebody actually ask me the other day, super sharp young guy who I think is going to build a great business. But he said, how do I expand and how do I grow my business? And it has to do with uh, photography. And I said, well, the first thing you have to remember is that the bigger you build a business, the greater your responsibility, but the less your responsibilities are going to be. And if you hang out all your responsibilities, you can't accept the larger responsibility. And I said, one of the things that gets in the way, and, and by the way, there are these lies that um, solopreneurs and smaller entrepreneurs believe. And Nico, remind me to come back to the, those lies. Okay, and then the Dale Chihuly example, because I'm going to depart a little bit. So your note will be good to bring me back to that because I don't want to depart too much on this. Anyway, I said, I said, number one lie, nobody can do what I do. And so you keep doing this basic responsibility. Wrong. It's just not true. It's not true about almost everything. There's one exception, and I'll give you that, that later on. But the point would be that you have to be able to free yourself from the thing that you're doing working, you know, in your business so that you can work on your business. And you've heard that saying probably before, but not maybe understood what it meant. And it means freeing yourself of responsibilities so you can have responsibility at a higher level. Now, why am I saying this when it comes to expertise? Well, if you're doing irrelevant things all day long, <clears throat> you can't build the relevant expertise. Let me give you an example of one of the companies that I, I was in that um, I was actually a founder in and I was a partner in. Uh, there was another very high level senior person who was doing a particular role in that company. And I said, I got to free you from this. I need you to take the next level. Um, and we need to find somebody to do what it is you're doing. And then as we build a business, we're going to eventually need two or three or four people to do this particular job until we have the technology that can automate it. And because I need you to think bigger and start leading a team at a higher level. So they can't do that. I have to do this. Nobody knows how to do this as well as I do. I do this the best. I said, well, I could hire somebody that is in college or did not go to college, and I could teach them to do that job as, a, as proficiently as you're doing within two days. Now, by the way, I had a really good relationship with this person. So while that might have sounded a little bit combative, it was actually 
intriguing and rapport building. He accepted my challenge thinking I would be wrong, but I wasn't, I was right. Why? Well, because I happened to be older than him and I had gone through this before. I had developed an expertise at identifying how to build expertise. So he freed himself from that role. Now, because he's a very high virtue person who is smart and a quick study, <clears throat> he never went back to that thinking. One time he learned that lesson and <clears throat> anything that he had that he was doing, he immediately asked himself, who else could do this for me? And he learned to be good, become good at that. That's how he was able to build his expertise in the leadership role that he had by removing himself from doing irrelevant things that don't matter. Okay. Um, so you have repetition, you have frequency. Now I alluded to another one, which is intensity. The intensity of trying to get a good grade over a longer period of time for whatever purpose is not really that great. But the intensity of knowing the foreign language when you're in the foreign land and you can only eat and drink and sleep if you can actually speak the language, that's very high, okay? It's also the purpose. If your purpose is the A, but your other purpose is to be an effective missionary, there are higher purposes. So you can get there. So repetition, intensity, frequency, and purpose are the three... Did I just say three? There are two different types of people in this world. No, now I ruined the joke. I literally, it's a great joke. Whenever you do something like that, you say there are three different types of people in the world, those who can count and those who can't. I couldn't even do self-deprecating humor. <laughs> I can't count and I can't use humor. All right, here we go. Um, uh, there are four things, repetition, frequency, intensity, and purpose. These things are very, very relevant. They're very important. So ask yourself in what you're doing, if you're going to lead effectively, what do you do more often? Okay, there are other people out there who are your competitors. They're doing it better than you. Why are they doing it? What is their purpose? Okay, uh, how often are they doing it? Um, you know, there is no doubt about it. When you do something more often, you get better at it. If you want to be good at the guitar, you play it more frequently with greater repetition and for a greater reason with greater intensity, and you're going to get better at it. I mean, if you literally had a recital that you were going to do and it had a, a date set for that, uh, you would get it done. Okay. Um, so look at those things.